Welcome to the Sanctuary. I'm Kyle, and I'm here to tell you, never be afraid to step into the pleasure den of the absurd. Now today is Mother's Day, May 14th, 2023, Sunday. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention and this 1968 classic album, We're Only In It For The Money. Uh, this album here, uh, I believe, was a Record Store Day uh, release of the mono version. Yes, that's right. Now, even if you were to hear the stereo version of this classic album, uh, I would describe it like this. It's the most hi-fi, lo-fi album you'll ever hear. Uh, you could also call it the most lo-fi, hi-fi album you're ever going to hear. And that's because, you know, in this was released in uh, 1968. And uh, recording uh, machines back then and... Um, and the editing involved, you know, would kind of uh, degrade the tape. There was, this album is packed with so much stuff that uh, it uh, certainly sounds like a 60s album as far as production goes. But at the same time, it's so far ahead of its time that... Um, it's sort of stuck in the middle of those Frank Zappa and Mothers of Invention 60s releases. And a lot of people will um, claim this to be uh, the masterpiece that it is. And um, sometimes I see it sort of um, not as um, high up on Zappa, uh, you know, fans' favorite lists. Uh, I think it's a very important album, um, and yes, it, it parodies um, the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's uh, album cover, and it was designed by uh, artist Cal Shankle, who's here, and um, here you'll see uh, Tom Wilson, executive producer. He produced the first two Zappa and the Mothers albums, Freak Out and Absolutely Free. He also produced a lot of the 1960s Bob Dylan classic albums. He um, produced Simon and Garfunkel in the 60s. He was big name producer at the time. And um, you'll also see on this cover a very important musical f figure standing next to Frank's wife, Gail. And that's Jimi Hendrix. Yes, he was really there for the photo shoot. And um, it shows you just what a significant uh, person Frank Zappa was to, you know, enter the scene and have all these people surround him. Um, you know, and um, he was a force to be reckoned with, as we all know. Uh, and it's good to see that in 2023... Frank Zappa is, is gaining more of a respect and, um, his, uh, and, a, and a wider audience, too. And, you know, I would always say that, you know, Frank Zappa was, uh, he, I wouldn't quite call him an outsider. He was very popular. He was very well known. Uh, through all major music circles. Um, and so when I was a kid growing up in the early 70s, I found myself, uh, you know, immersed in music from the 1960s, especially the Beatles and the Monkees and the Beach Boys. And, you know, that was through my uh, oldest brother, who was seven years older than me, and, uh, you know, as I um, achieved 
consciousness in this physical plane, you know, I was very well aware of uh, all the recorded output of the Beatles. And uh, then um, shortly thereafter, uh, my older cousins would lend their albums to my brother and we got to hear the early Sabbath albums, Jimi Hendrix, and, you know, our minds and ears were opened to all this. And we were, me and my brothers were all very um, accepting of this music, you know, and um, my parents um, were as well, although uh, that's only because <laughs> we used to play it so loud that they would tolerate it enough to let us keep listening to it. And so in the 70s, uh, as my older brother got older, him and his friends uh, were pretty progressive uh, with their, what was going on uh, in the music scene. And, you know, you had uh, bands like, um, you know, well, like uh, Roxy Music and Brian Eno and, uh, um, and Frank Zappa, you know. And um, so I got to hear <laughs> a lot of these Zappa albums like uh, Sheikah Booty and Joe's Garage when they were uh, brand new, you know. And, um, and one of the albums that uh, my brother would listen to often was this one, which was from 1968. And... Um, you know, uh, it um, was very different and very weird. And um, there was just something about it. Like, like we kind of, in a weird way for children, you know, kind of knew like, well, boy, he's talking about somebody on this album and, and certain things, you know, and, uh, but a lot of it too, we just noticed like the sped up voices and um, there is a lot going on on this record. It's not just the songs. It's not just the music. This whole album is a patchwork of a music concrete. And, um, and you know, some of the songs on here, you know, are pretty enjoyable on their own. But spliced together, it's just one after another after another. There's no, you know, breaks in between these songs. It goes bam, 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 you know, with conversations and phone calls and, you know, weird sounds and, and voices, uh, statements being made. And, you know, it, it uh, certainly is a different album than uh, Sgt. Pepper, the one that this cover... Uh, you know, uh, replicates. <laughs> and um, so here is the, this was the, of course, just like Sergeant Pepper has the front and the back and it has all the words and everything tells you who's on it and all that info. And, and here's the, the inside. <laughs> Who else but Zappa and the mothers? I mean, really, come on now. Um, you got Ian Underwood in there, Jimmy Carl Black, Don Preston, Roy Estrada, Bunk Gardner, Billy Mundy, and Frank himself. And um, like I say, this this is the mono mix. Some of the songs on here, I, I, I'm not going to list them all, but just some that I can uh, read and know about. Um, the writing is real small on the back of this album, but, you know, Who Needs the Peace Corps? Concentration Moon, Mom and Dad, What's the Ugliest Part of Your Body? Uh, Harry, You're a Beast. Uh, Let's Make the Water Turn Black. Um, what else? The mother people, um, you know, take your clothes off when you dance, along with lots of other weird um, music concrete, avant-garde, um, tape splice, patchwork compositions that are just amazing. This album um, is a masterpiece. And, and like I say, the equipment of the time uh, lends it to being, you know, the most hi-fi, lo-fi album you'll ever hear. And, of course, it comes with uh, the original uh, collectible uh, 
cutouts. Sergeant Pepper had a similar thing, and so did this. <laughs> and um, what's cool about this uh, release from Record Store Day is that it is also a picture disc. And, um, you know, you get that drum head. We're only in it for the money. And then uh, the other side, you get a picture of the band. And, you know, it, it does sound good. Um, I think it's a masterpiece and deserves to be heard. But would it be the first album that I would recommend to a Zappa novice um, or, or maybe um, somebody who, you know, who's never heard Frank before uh, or maybe has just heard one or two albums, you know? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I, but I do think that, yes, if you do, like, get into Frank's music, um, I think that it deserves to be heard. You should hear it. It's, it's, it, the topics of these songs, you know, range from just um, weird, humorous childhood stories to uh, uh, total American satire, um, making fun of the hippies, making fun of the older generation, um, making fun of just the whole time um, that's going on in, you know, 1967, 68. And, um, you know, it, uh, I think, you know, again, this, this album showcases, you know, just what Frank, excuse me, is going to do later on. Uh, on Joe's Garage and Sheikah Booty and, you know, uh, just so many releases. And, um, I mean, I, I would recommend Sheikah Booty to a novice, you know. Um, a lot of people would recommend, like, Apostrophe or Overnight Sensation. And, um, yeah, I, I'd include, uh, you know, Sheikah Booty in there. Joe's Garage, though, I must say, in all my uh, travelings and adventures and in talking with people, Joe's Garage is the one Zappa album that non-Zappa album, <laughs> that non-Zappa fans like and own and have listened to and enjoy. Um, it's just seems to be that way for so many people that um, Joe's Garage, as far as I know in talking with people, is the number one album people are aware of, that people like, and that people have heard often. So um, and that's another story. Today's Mother's Day. Go listen to We're Only In It For The Money. Listen to it for yourself. And um, listen to other Zappa and the Mother's albums. That's what they're there for. And I thank you for watching. Please, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and subscribe to the channel because this is what we do. I stare in front of the camera, hold up records, and talk about them. And uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, never be afraid to step into the pleasure den of the absurd.